Today's topic, what you need to know about 457B plans. And you're probably thinking, Chad, what's a 457B plan? And exactly why we're gonna cover the topic today. Because for whatever reason, the 401k, the 403b, the backdoor Roth IRA, they get all the attention. But today, we're gonna to give you some great details on another wonderful investment account that some of you, or many of you, may have the opportunity to take advantage of. So stay tuned, that's all coming up next. So what is a 457B? A 457B is really just another retirement vehicle you can utilize. So think of it in the same ballpark as your 401k or 403b. Usually, almost every time, at least that I can recall with our clients and, and through all my past history, a 403b is gonna be paired up with a 457b. Uh, so with that 457b, especially for our academia hospitals, our teaching hospitals. So what will happen here is it, think of it in that same ballpark. The really unique thing about a 457b though um, is that you it, it's still on special island. So if you have 19,500 that can go into a 403b, you actually have another 19,500 that can go into your 457b. Now we're using 2020 numbers, so with those two, you can utilize that. So it's a really unique feature. Um, if you're within three years of retirement, there's also some special catch-up contributions. Uh, the easiest one is to say you can put in two times that amount. So uh, instead of 19,500, you can actually put in 39,000. Uh, so there's some unique rules there. Read through your plan description there, but still something really nice to take advantage of. So at the end of the day, to keep things simple, a 457B, if you have access to it, is just another investment vehicle that you can utilize in addition to, most of the time, in addition to your 403B. Okay, this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So for our clientele working with physicians, we're always seeing the 457B from the government side. So there's special precautions in place to safeguard those funds. So there's government 457Bs, and then there's non-government 457Bs. We'll keep things very simple here. We are very comfortable telling individuals to invest into a 457B that is government run. We are not as confident saying that for the private plan, so the non-governmental 457Bs. There's just more risk there. Uh, we'll attach this video to the actual blog post where you can read more into it. More of the story is this. With the government 457B plan, we know that there's precautions in place safeguarding those assets. On the, on the private side, the non-government side, there is a possibility that you could lose those funds uh, for different reasons, but we'll leave it at that. Just make sure you're doing your research, especially if you're doing the, the private non-government 457B, but that's one of the big things to, to keep an eye on when you look at possibly utilizing this investment vehicle going forward. All right, next section is why should you invest in a 457B? Really, it's just another tax deferred account. So it's giving you an opportunity to save more money on a pre-tax basis, get tax deferred growth, and then pull it out and we'd have to pay Uncle Sam. But again, the unique thing is it's because it sits on its own island, it's giving you another spot, again, using 2020 numbers, to save that 19,500. So that's why we really like the 457B. And again, I'm really, when I speak generally here, I'm always thinking really from the government 457B. Again, if you're linked to an academic hospital or to a teaching hospital, that's what you're going to see. If you work for a larger corporation or maybe a private practice that also put in a 457B, that is most likely a non-governmental 457B and you gotta read the, the, you know, the fine print on those. So, that's why you would invest in your 457B. It's just another savings bucket. You would take advantage of the same items, pre-tax deductions, tax deferred growth. The same reason why you saved your 401K or your 403B, we want you to take that same mindset and put it into your 457B. Okay, the next section is how to coordinate a 457B. So this is how I would look at it from a high level overview and then I'll give you a really cool specific example to look at. So high level overview says this, let's assume you have a 403B and a 457B this is how I would approach it. First thing I always wanna do is max out that 403B. The next spot I'm likely gonna to go to is my backdoor Roth IRA. Once that's maxed out, probably the next place I'm coming back to is that 457B. Once that's maxed out, then I would go back to a taxable account. So 
moral of the story for us is always take advantage of the pre-tax savings especially as a high income physician this is a spot where you really want to take advantage of that so that's how we would look at it here's a really unique setup that we see at a lot of teaching hospitals a lot of nonprofits. they will set up three separate plans sounds crazy you know i get it but they have it so here's what it looks like let's just say hospital the hospital says you need to put a mandatory five percent contribution into this plan you also have a 450, 403B and you all has, also have a 457B. Well, when they have a mandatory contribution, let's just say they tell you to put in 5%, that is labeled as a 401A contribution. It's mandatory. So whatever goes in there is actually on its own island as well. And usually that's where your match will come into. But now you have the flexibility using 2020 numbers to put in another 19,500 to your 403B and if you have the blessing of a 457B, you can also put another $19,500 into that 457B. So that is our favorite setup. So when we talk about you know, how to best utilize a 457B, if you have that setup, it's, it's my favorite. I love to see it. Um, but even if you don't have that setup, if you can still take advantage of a 403B and a 457B, that's a, that's a good problem to have and take advantage of that when you can. All right, so in closing, you know, we, we end with just retirement savings should be a priority. Again, we work with physicians day in and day out. So we know that we're high income professionals. So with that high income, we want to defer as much as we can today in hopes of by the time we retire, we have less income, but then taxes are lower, tax rates are lower. That's the ultimate goal. So that's why we really like to take advantage of the 401k, the 403b, the 457b, um, even HSAs, and even you can go the whole way out to flexible spending accounts. Uh, that's why we prioritize retirement spending. But we wanted to go over some of the main points to take it to one to know of, but to take advantage of with a 457B. So as always, thanks for tuning in. If you always, if any time you have a question, please send us a note. Um, but as always, again, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next video.